I am Dr. Shibunyo. I am a director of breast imaging and uh, ultrasound in uh, Tampa, Florida at Moffitt Cancer Center. And today I will be talking about uh, breast uh, elastography. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Shibunyo and I will be giving a talk about breast elastography. Elastography is an imaging technique that depicts tissue stiffness by means of imaging tissue strain from external compression. A software technique uh, integrated into the ultrasound system without any external equipment is utilized. Uh, same probe is used for the B mode and elastography ultrasound imaging. The elastographic information is obtained in real time and it only takes a few minutes, uh, anywhere from two to five minutes. Uh, based on a principle of s which is similar to palpation, that's what uh, elastography uh, uh, technique is all about. On physical exam, as you know, tumors feel much harder than the surrounding tissue. With compression or vibration, when it is applied to the soft tissues, uh, ultrasound then can be used to create a map of soft tissue deformation. The results are displayed on an image called elastogram. The elastogram generates a display of relative stiffness of the lesion to the rest of the image on a color image. And the main uh, colors that you will be seeing are blue, red, and green. Blue will represent stiff lesions. Red and green represent soft lesions. It is important to have the surrounding tissue included in the image. And the use, we will be using a scoring system which was developed by Dr. Ueno from uh, Japan. Uh, this is a diagram of all the um, scoring um, from one through five. I will be going over each one separately. This is just to give you an overview. And uh, as you go from one through five, uh, the uh, one represents the benign lesions and the five represents the malignant lesions in progression. The green uh, represents the greater strain. Uh, that's why it is soft and it looks green on the um, uh, images. And the blue represents a smaller strain and it is a, uh, represents a hard lesion. The real-time elastogram is superimposed in color on the B scan uh, using a freehand scanning technique. And both are seen on the monitor with the B mode on the right and the elastogram on the left. This is an example of an elastogram of a simple or complicated cyst and it has a specific appearance of a three-layer pattern where you can appreciate the blue, the green, and the red. So this is fairly um, um, uh, specific for a cystic structure and we all uh, recognize it as such. Um, the compression when uh, is being applied is very important that it is applied in a very light touch. Uh, I refer to it as a feather touch. You need to use a lot of gel. Uh, there has to be a steady compression and the compression of normal tissue is necessary to obtain the uniform image of the green. Uh, then the area of pathology is then investigated using the same compression. This is an example of a breast tissue, normal breast tissue. Uh, this is the skin, and this is a fairly glandular, uh, um, dense tissue. And on elastogram, you can appreciate mostly the green and the reds, which imply that this is a fairly soft area or normal breast tissue. On a elastic score of one, uh, you will see an even strain over the whole lesion, which is uh, green as well as the surrounding uh, breast parenchyma. This would be an example of a fibroadenoma. Another example of a benign lesion, which uh, uh, is seen on an elastogram, would be a typical uh, hypercoagulated lesion, which is parallel to the uh, skin. However, when you apply the elasticity, you notice that the lesion is all green and it is surrounded by fairly soft parenchyma, which is red or green, and this is a fibroadenoma. Uh, this is an example of real-time scanning with elastography where you are applying pressure 
to this uh, very light pressure and you notice that the actual lesion and the surrounding tissues sort of blend in together. They all are either uh, green or red, which implies uh, that they are soft, not stiff. And on the gray uh, scale image, uh, this corresponds uh, to a um, labulated lesion and this was a fibroadenoma and this would be given an elasticity score of one. The elastic score two um, uh, demonstrates strain over the uh, most of the lesion with some areas being spared and they are shown as mixed green and blue. It is normally seen with fibroadenoma or complex cyst. Uh, however, I would like to show you this particular lesion with the real-time clip. Again, demonstrating that uh, when you do the um, actual compression, which are fairly light, in this case it shows both blue and uh, green areas, which would be typical of an elastic score number two. However, if you evaluate the um, actual uh, B-mode image, you notice that this is not a very uh, uh, labulated lesion, but it is, it is labulated actually, but it does have some areas of uh, um, angular margins and it does have posterior shadowing, so that would be more uh, suspicious for a malignancy and probably a score of 4B or 4C. And this turned out to be a um, um, invasive ductal carcinoma after performing a biopsy. So the uh, the point of this case is that for final assessment for lesions, you need to do both uh, the grayscale imaging and the elastogram as a uh, single package and then decide based on the worst characteristics, which are we dealing with a benign or malignant lesion. And as with uh, using the BIRED system for uh, any kind of uh, lesion, you always go with the most worrisome finding and in this case would be more of the angular margins and the posterior shadowing. Uh, as, the, as shown. For elastic score number three, the strain is at the periphery of the lesion uh, where it's mostly green and the uh, central portion is blue. This is often seen with intraductal papilloma. I am uh, showing you actually a case of a fibroadenoma where you have centrally uh, stiffness of, of uh, image with blue color and then uh, around it there is the green and then surrounded by red. Uh, so this was a fibroadenoma. Uh, elastic score number four has no strain over the entire lesion. It's completely blue, but it is surrounded by the green uh, normal parenchyma. And this is all, always seen with, cars most of the time seen with carcinoma. This is an example of a 39-year-old woman with invasive ductal cancer. And on the B scan, you can appreciate a lesion that is irregular, has uh, angular margins, has some posterior shadowing. And on um, the elastogram, you appreciate that the lesion corresponds to a blue area, and it is surrounded by benign parenchyma, which is green and uh, red. Um, another uh, lesion which would be uh, difficult to distinguish on B scanning itself because it's uh, hypoechoic, fairly well circumscribed, but has posterior uh, enhancement, and this could represent a complex cyst, but we cannot exclude um, a solid lesion, um, so we would definitely biopsy this, but with um, the help of elastogram, we are seeing that this is all blue, which would be consumed with score four, and it's very suspicious for malignancy, and this was, after biopsy, a labular carcinoma. The elastic score five demonstrates no strain over the lesion, and also includes the surrounding areas, and uh, the um, is depicted as blue, and uh, it's often, uh, or most of the time, seen with um, uh, cancers, which are usually the uh, lower or mid-grade uh, cancers, which tend to have desmoplastic reaction. This is a nice example of the lesion, which is very irregular with posterior shadowing. And when you um, look at the elastogram, the actual uh, blue area is larger than the one depicted on uh, B mode. This was grade two invasive ductal carcinoma on core biopsy. Malignant lesions tend to be larger on strain images than on corresponding B-mode images, 
potentially because of the surrounding desmoplastic reaction that accompanies most of these malignancies. And that's what we would see on the elastogram a lesion which appears larger than uh, on B mode. There are certain uh, studies that have been uh, performed. One of them is by Dr. Weno himself, and um, he has found that most malignant lesions are either uh, have either a score uh, of four or five, and then he has not found one malignant lesion associated with a score of one. Um, most benign lesions are either one or two, and the his results showed that elastography showed a sensitivity of 86.9, specificity of 92.1, and an accuracy of 89.8%. Uh, there is a multi-institutional or multi-center clinical trial that was performed in Italy, and these findings of this trial were presented at RSNA in 2006. Uh, 874 lesions were um, evaluated, uh, 614 were benign and 260 were malignant. Uh, the uh, evaluation with real-time elastography showed a very high specificity in benign lesions, including Pirates 3 lesions. Uh, the negative predictive value uh, was 98% for all the lesions and 96.3% for all the Pirates 3 lesions. Uh, Real-time uh, elastography does help uh, conventional ultrasound in characterizing uh, breast lesions. Uh, there is a French multicentric prospective study uh, utilizing 345 lesions in patients in, uh, in 314 patients. This was presented at the European Congress of Radiology. Elastography for the lesions of all sizes achieved sensitivity of 80 percent, uh, specificity of 93 percent, and per positive predictive value of 85.3 percent. The negative predictive value was 90.3 percent. What's interesting about this study is that the sensitivity was best for lesions that were less than 5 millimeters, which is very helpful because the, uh, those lesions are not well evaluated with um, B mode. Uh, so this is a great uh, tool to help further characterize these lesions. Uh, there is also a study that was uh, conducted uh, with the Italian group uh, led by Dr. Martina Locatelli, was presented at the uh, um, European Congress of Radiology in 2007. It was a multi-center study. And uh, the study de demonstrated a negative predictive value for BIRADS 3 and 4 lesions to be 98%. And again, uh, interesting finding, lesions that were less than five, uh, 5 millimeters, the negative predictive value was 100%. So in conclusion, the real-time elastography helps conventional ultrasound in characterizing breast lesions. Complementary sign. Um, it is a complementary sign to the B-mode imaging, and it's highly specific for BIRADS 3 lesions, and it decreases false positive biopsies. Elasticity imaging may eliminate the need for biopsies, resulting in significant cost saving for the health service. Currently, about 80% of breast lesions biopsied are benign, according to the American Cancer Society. A large multicenter study is needed to validate these findings and to determine accuracy of this imaging technique. I would like to present you with a case of a 59-year-old female with an invasive ductal carcinoma in her right breast and uh, a suspicious right axillary lymph nodes that were documented on MRI. Uh, this is the um, B mode and the uh, elastogram of this lesion, and it has appear has a score of five because the lesion uh, on B mode, I'm um, sorry, on the elastogram appears larger than the one on the B mode. So w it was given a, um, a score of five, and the biopsy demonstrated a, um, a cancer. But because the lymph nodes were abnormal on MRI, an ultrasound was performed. And um, we were trying to decide, based on ultrasound imaging, whether these were abnormal lymph nodes. So we could not determine from just grayscale imaging whether this is benign versus malignant. 
uh, using the short to long axis diameter ratio, in which case, uh, in, in, uh, in this case, which was 0.53, which was greater than 0.5, uh, Dr. Lishik has demonstrated that most of these lesions would be uh, metastatic lymph nodes, 75%, but 18% of those could be benign. So ultimately, you need to perform a uh, biopsy. And the, um, since we were uh, studying the uh, actual mass with the elastography, we then decided to also e e investigate the lymph node, and it takes, it shows a classic uh, score 4 lesion, which is consistent with a uh, malignancy. Uh, since ultrasound uh, can, uh, cytology can yield fault ne negative results, elastography seems to have a potential to improve that accuracy of percutaneous biopsy. In our situation, when we biopsied that node, uh, the um, results came back metastatic carcinoma, and basically it uh, staged the patient, and she did not have to uh, go through the sentinel lymph node, and as a result, again, uh, the, uh, we are trying to reduce the cost of medicine by performing these procedures. So this also seems to have a great value, especially in breast imaging. Uh, possibly in any uh, other cancers that are often uh, the lymph nodes are evaluated would be a melanoma, and um, we may be able to perform elastography on these uh, lymph nodes and uh, maybe make a decision whether we should biopsy them or not at that time. I thank you for your time.